Hey guys, how the frig's it going today? Well, today I want to put new dinosaurs in the car and get the old dinosaurs out of the car. Obviously not in that order, because that's not how you dig get dinosaurs into your car. And if you're wondering what I'm referring to by dinosaurs, no, I don't mean performance additives. I mean oil. Let's face it, guys. The oil that we use for gasoline and the oils that we use to lubricate our engine a billion years ago used to be frickin' dinosaurs. It is what it is. Now, I was going to do this myself because I've been doing so much on the car myself lately that why not? But I got a little problem, see? See, the problem is, is my ramps don't fit under the car. And because working on vehicles isn't, you know, my forte, I've never actually jacked up a car before. Except for this one time, but I had supervision from a mechanic who knew what they were doing, but they actually jacked up the car. He showed me the jacking point, but this was back in 2004. No, I had this house, so it had to be after 2006. Anyway, because we did my Trans Am and his uh, Crown Vic. Jacked them both up. Well, we did my car first and then his car, and we did an oil change in my garage. Thing is, is it was so long ago, like at least 12 years ago, that I can't remember. Now, I did look online, and they said to either use the cross member that supports the engine, that big piece of metal that goes like yonk, 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 or to use the frame rail. Now, I did look underneath the car and I saw both these items. However, after conversing with people on Facebook, they said because you don't know the condition of those items, the last thing you want is after putting all this paintwork into the car is to go and jack it up and fire the jack right through the floor pan of the car. Which I can confirm, I don't want that to happen. So, I'm thinking of taking the cheater's way out. Now, I did buy oil, I bought a filter. I'm thinking of taking the car over to Jiffy Lubes and having them do it for two reasons. One, they have a pit, which means I can get underneath the car and see what the hell's going on under there to see, you know, what's happening. And it'll make it easier for them to swap the oil out. And two, sometimes there's an apprentice mechanic on site that may be able to visually inspect my lines, such as brake and fuel lines, just to make sure everything's copacetic and nothing's looking crusty. If they come back and tell me, yeah, those brake lines are kind of rough, well, then I just take the car home, park it, make an appointment with my, my mechanic to get it in to have the brake lines swapped out. I won't be doing that work. I am a heavy advocate of not doing work on your vehicle that requires your vehicle to stop if you're inexperienced. So, like, I see a lot, like, uh, actually, there was a situation here in town where a guy up on the hill decided he didn't want to spend the money at Canadian Tire to do brake pads because, you know, $25 brake pads shouldn't cost $200 to install. He was going to do it himself. So he watched the YouTube video on it, got the gist of it, installed the brake pads, but he removed the calipers and didn't know that when you do that, when you disconnect a caliper, it lets air into the system and now you got to bleed the brake line. So sure enough, he's coming down Airport Hill, he goes to apply the brakes and there's nothing and he ends up rolling through the intersection and getting T-boned. For components that make the car go forward, hey, whatever. But if you cannot safely bring that car to a halt in a situation where you need to, like some of the areas around here where parents don't pay attention to their children, and the little kids just run out in the middle of the road like idiots. You got to be able to tromp those brakes hard and lock that car up and stop it. So I'm a heavy advocate of not doing work on your own safety equipment and letting the professionals do it. So I figured I can get two birds stoned same time, get the car into the shop, get the oil dropped, put new oil into it, or dinosaurs as I like to call them, and head to the gas station. Talk, well, have them inspect the lines and tell me yay or nay, and then while it's there they can also do like a lube on the ball joints and all that and check them out and tell me if they're still good or not because there was a lot of weight on the car over the winter so it might have stressed some components out here and there i'd like to be safe and then i'm thinking i might take her down to uh okay any of you guys who've been with me since the beginning since the skaven days not the vlogging life days the skaven days you remember that intro i used to have do i still have that intro i think i do you know what Let's roll that intro. Okay, that Northern Life, the gateway, that's an actual thing here in North Bay. It's down at Lee Park. I'm thinking I want to take the car down there, park it under it, and get some snapshots for Facebook and Instagrams. I think that might be kind of fun. Then we'll go touring around. I'll show you around town. Why not? Let's go have some fun. 
But first, I need to drive this coffee in my face. All right, so I got the GoPro on me, the Session. It's my favorite. Really hate the fact that GoPro stopped making them, but can't win them all, boys. Take a rip over to Jiffy Lube. First thing we got to do is try and get the car out of the garage without uh, hooking a mirror on the side of the freaking door. Should be easy. Before I back this thing out, I wanted to move the truck over, so it's kind of like using the cement thing that marks off the driveway versus the lawn, because, well, look, you can't tell that my driveway is not a lawn. Just to give me room to back it out. Ah, oh, we should be fine, though. All right, let's pitter-patter. mechanism ever. You don't even need the keys to keep the car running. The problem is you can still drive off with it. Here she is in the sunlight. Like I said, not the greatest paint job, but at least she's uniform. You can tell the masking uh, worked really well around the doors. She needs a bath. That's for sure. Definitely need to get some of this polish off of it. But, at least she's all the same color now, so that's uh, kind of badass. All right, I'm gonna uh, grab a mount, let's go. I think Scampers is worried about me. It's okay, buddy, I'll be back. Something's not right about this. A Ford hat and a Pontiac? I got a solution. That's better. All right, let's go. showed you underneath the car because Jesus Murphy she's still immaculate under there but let me tell you parking it here over the years bad idea holy was there ever a lot of plant life underneath the freaking tree and then the car just wrapped up and everything all right I'm gonna go in the house I got to uh, do some stuff and then we're gonna go actually I want to go and drop some footage edit some stuff up and then we're gonna head down to Lee Park gotta grab the DSLR uh, after running around like a headless chicken looking for my freaking camera bag Finally got it. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna go outside, we're gonna give the car a wash because uh, she's pretty filthy from sitting in the garage and all that. So I wanna wash it down. I was gonna go to the pay and spray, but you know what? It's probably gonna cost me like 10, 15 bucks. And meanwhile, I got a perfectly good garden hose outside. So why not make use of the garden hose? My parents gave me this implement a long time ago. I figured we'll give it a try because uh, my hose nozzle is covered in dog shit. I don't know how Oreo pulled that out. Look at how much room there's in this garage now. There's not a car in here. This is impressive. Got to do some cleanup, though. Got a lot of shit on the floor. Uh, that'll be another day. Probably tomorrow. Anyway, I want to get my good car soap, which I think is back here. I'm probably wrong on that. And I totally am. What the heck is that jug? Uh, where the heck did I put my good car soap? It's not that one. It's the blue one. Is it? No, it's not that one either. Where the heck did I put my Simonized car soap? I don't know where it is. I guess we'll use this one. I thought it was back here. I didn't shove it up there, did I? No. Huh. Well, son of a gun. I have no idea where my good car soap is. So I had this kind of car soap that was like a wash and wax. Uh, and it was really, really good shit. And for the life of me, I can't find it. But that's been my day all day, man. Looking for the DSLR and looking for uh, other things and stuff and junk. And Oh, wait, there it is. Ah, this is the good kind right here. Wash and wax. Mm. 
It's got a carnuba wax straight out of the carnubians. All right, let's uh, clean out this bucket and let's get ourselves some soapy water. All right, I washed the car. It's looking all wet. At least now the windshield's somewhat clean. Are you still alive? You can't be on there, bud. And I also washed the truck. Now, I know a lot of you are gonna say, Adam, that soap you used, even though it has wax, it's no replacement for, you know, actual wax. And I agree. That's all I have to say about that. Obviously, laying down a real wax would be really nice and would really make it shine. And I do have some shit in here. I bought um, this kind a long time ago. It's a liquid polish by, who makes this? Turtle Wax. And I bought it for my old Focus because the problem is, is like today's not a bad day. Today's the perfect day to wax a car because it's there's no sun, so it won't dry out super fast and you won't be buffing it for three years. Where on a day like yesterday where we had a lot of sun, that would have been a bad time because it would have dried out. What's nice about the Turtle Wax, however, is you can use it at like plus 40 degrees Celsius and no care in the world. It just works. So that's pretty cool. Well, I think what we're gonna do, I've got the dog over right now so he can rock his shit. He just did. I'm gonna put him back in the house. We're gonna jump back in the Trans Am. We're gonna head down to Lee Park, snap some shots. Get after it then. Well guys, there she is. I already took my photos, my photos, and it's already starting to rain. So that's awesome. You probably noticed that there's a streak of line on the ground. I thought I was leaking fuel, but it turns out it's just water because I just bathed the car. And water likes to collect in areas. I'm still going to get it looked over by a mechanic just to be safe. But uh, I took my photos and here they are. Mow. I'm gonna head her home because uh, I don't feel like driving in the rain because the wipers on this thing definitely need to be replaced. They work, just not awesomely, you know? Anyway, let's pit her patter and have at her. Just came down to Sobeys to get something to uh, have for dinner. Came back out and I was like, where the hell's my freaking truck? Forgot I drove the Trans Am. <laughs> oh man, I also tried to unlock it with the fob. That obviously didn't work that well, so. Yeah, the auto locks in this thing are they're weak, so I'm gonna have to replace the solenoids. Not a big deal. Anyway, let's uh, go home. All right, I've been home for a bit, and I had myself something to eat. That was about 30 minutes ago. Now I wanna go downstairs and rip a serious chest workout. So that's my battle plan. So let's get after it then. Well guys, Project Dirty Bird's done. Got the oil changed, it's all painted up. Been driving around all day. That's pretty much the end of all my, all my projects for the summer, if you think about it. Like I got a new one. I'm gonna aim this camera up a little bit. Sorry for the halo over my head. There's like a light right there. Let me see if I can position this thing a little better. Okay, now I'm like soft shadowed. My lighting's off. There, that's a little better, eh? Yeah. Project Dirty Bird's done. It's been a three week project because I've been doing it while working. You know, it's kind of rough when you have a job to make a video series, but it is what it is. Let me turn off that fan so the audio doesn't get messed. It's kind of throwing some heavy weights there earlier. I hit a new PR on the friggin' Bowflex. Every friggin' rod, 12 reps, 5 sets, these things are gonna be on fire tomorrow. But that's okay, because that means they're growing, and I like that. Project Dirty Bird's done. The raspberry bushes are pretty much all dead. The mini bikes are fixed and sold. When I started this summer, I gave you guys those goals. That that's what I wanted to get done. Clear out the back raspberry bush and trees clear out the garage so we can bring the trans am in there and then i wanted to respray the trans am and drive the tits off of it get insurance on it and go we're done i have no idea where to go from here not saying i'm quitting youtube i'm basically saying that i gotta find something else something else to do something else that uh is gonna be fun i got a couple ideas for projects one of them is is my i i, I can work the bicep, but I don't have many exercises like my farmer's tan, that's pretty badass, right? But I don't have any good tricep workouts. Something I missed from the old gym I used to go to was they had a rope that I could attach to a pulley and do pull downs. So what I was thinking, why are you growling? My dog's an idiot. What I was thinking 
was getting either a rope from a hardware store and Joss tonight came up clutch. She got me some of these things from her store. And what's nice about these is using the power rod system on the Bowflex, it's a pain in the arse to hook all the rods at once through the hooks. I don't know if I can get this close enough to the camera, but I can't. These hook things are a pain in the arse to use because of the way they close. So what I was doing was I was hooking all the rods through here, letting them sit on the top so they went all around here, and then I would hook that hook here and then pull. The other thing I can do with this is I can run ropey, like a thick rope through here, hook it on the top pulley, and then do boom, boom. We're getting the, uh, the triceps. I get a burn there when I'm doing uh, bench day. Because when you're benching, you're working your triceps. So I figured maybe we'll start having some fun and making some gym equipment instead of just sitting around the house and doing the same old stuff. So, you know, I've done a lot in the last, since last May. And I think about it now and it's like, holy shit, you know, I'm 40 years old, guys. And it took me this long to actually start taking better care of myself, start being happy with life and not hating everything and not being such an angry individual. And it feels freaking good, you know? It feels freaking fantastic. You know, setting your mind to something. And despite all the comments, you know, there's a lot of good comments. You guys are really supportive. But there's a lot of people out there that it's their goal in life to discourage people from doing things on their own and I don't know if it's because they themselves don't have the confidence to do it or if they just get joy out of discouraging people because they're just that sad of an individual. And that's kind of upsetting if you think about it, right? Like imagine going through life, trying to talk people out of learning, going through life, trying to make people feel bad about stuff they do, going through life, making people just doubt themselves all the time. That's no good. You gotta learn, you gotta fail, you gotta do stuff, make mistakes, and then find your way around them. People who sit there and just spend all their time talking you out of doing stuff, saying you can't do it, trying to make you feel less confident than you are, it's not a good trait. It's not people you want in your life. Like luckily all my local friends were, have been supportive of me of everything I've done. You know, I don't really take the YouTube comments too much to heart because you guys have never met me. You only know what you see going on to this camera. You never met me in person. Like, I'm not much different in person. I'm pretty much the same freaking guy. I talk to you like this anyway. I'm not putting on a character for the camera. I am who I am. A lot of people just get this joy out of trying to talk people out of doing stuff. The amount of people, when I started doing, like, for instance, the raspberry bushes, the comments I got were a toss between, why are you doing that? Those raspberry bushes produce raspberries and those are very expensive. What they don't realize is, is those raspberry bushes started off to be a two foot patch and turned into a 30 foot patch in over like friggin' 10 years. If I wouldn't have done something, that patch would have turned into my whole backyard and then probably would have crept onto my neighbor's yard and just overgrown this entire friggin' neighborhood. Something had to be done and something got done because it got did. You know, when I uh, sold the mini bikes, the amount of flack I got on selling the mini bikes was like, why are you doing that, man? Those things are awesome. You made the best videos on those, blah, blah, blah. But I don't ride with anybody. They were just sitting in the garage taking up space. Why not convert them into money that I can use towards the next project, which was Project Dirty Bird. It was like a better idea, and heaven knows I needed a lot of sandpaper. So it comes down to that. It's don't be afraid to try new things. Don't be afraid to fail. Because when you fail, and like, trust me, Project Dirty Bird, this is the first time I've ever sprayed a car. First time I've ever used an HVLP gun. First time I ever had to like think outside the box on what the heck I'm gonna do. Cause remember, I've been posting these videos ahead. So this video here you're watching is coming on the 16th and it is currently the 10th. If you think about it, I've been learning this on my own without having any professional advice. So, you know, let that sit and marinate. All I'm saying is just try things, learn things, get out there, do stuff, enjoy life. Don't be afraid to fail. Because you don't learn by succeeding, you learn by failing, figuring it out, and going forward. Well, I guess you do also learn by succeeding. But you won't learn anything if you don't try new things. You know, that, that's, that's life. We only got one. It's not that long. So don't live in a box. Open the door. Get the frig out there. Figure it out.
Now, the other thing I wanted to talk about was Project Dirty Bird, because let's face it, that was a three week long project. That was hardcore. That was no ripping raspberry bushes out of the back, knocking down a few trees, logging them up and giving them to Rex to burn this winter. That was a huge job to paint that car in that little garage space. Things I wish I would have done differently that I know now that I didn't know then. Number one, masking. I oversprayed the back windshield because my masking job sucked. I used the wrong tape. Didn't realize that, whoops. Number two, the paper that I used, it worked, but I should have used plastic. That would have been better. Uh, the paper didn't, no paint went through the paper. Actually, the paper was waterproof. I didn't realize that. I had a wax coat on it to prevent water from getting through it. That paper is intended if you're painting your house, like this wall, and I had a carpet, I would lay that across the carpet and then tape it on the baseboards so that anything that would fall off the wall wouldn't contaminate the carpet. Okay, cool, right on. It worked, the paper worked fine, it was perfect. I got a lot of it left over. Don't know what I'm gonna do with it. Somebody might need it. If you need some paper, let me know. Preferably if you live nearby. The other thing I wish I would have done more is research the art of thinning paint. When I got the gun from Eastwood, the, uh, the instruction booklet said, when you're thinning the paint to make sure it can shoot through the gun, take the viscosity cup fill it, and then with the timer, you count 120 seconds, and you wait, and you wait, and if it takes longer than 120 seconds for that cup to empty, paint's too thick. I thinned the paint, six part paints to one part thinner. 120 seconds. Actually, it went through the cup in 75 seconds. So theoretically, in my mind, it was too thin. I was like, okay. I looked it up in the manual, and it said that's fine. If it's too thin, it'll spray fine, but you should probably thicken it up. And I was like, well, you know what? We're going to try this. Six part paints, one part thinner. If I would have followed the freaking guide that I found afterwards, <laughs> where everybody was thinning Rust-Oleum trem clad, two parts paint, one part thinner. So, you know, that's going to make it pretty damn thin. It would have went on flat. It wouldn't have bubbled up the way it did. I could have done lighter coats, less material, and more sprays. But because I didn't do that, that's why the skin on Dirty Bird looked like Freddy Krueger. That's right. Went too thick on the paint. Didn't cure right. We got what we got. I tried to experiment with clear coat. That didn't work. That was a bad idea. That was a waste of money. I learned that. Wasn't a good time to clear coat. I thought maybe if I laid down a couple bases of clear coat, I could flatten that out and it would look good. The roof is shiny, but you can totally see the bumps underneath. But it's flat. Like you rub your hand on it, it's smooth, but it's got texture. Not physical texture, visible texture, if that makes any sense. Anyway, not a big deal. I'm not too worried about that. The other thing that I wish I would have done is I watched a video of a guy using a foam roller and he, he did his Acura Integra with a foam roller, trim clad. What he did, what he, he thinned it, three parts paint, one part thinner, into a painting tray, rolled it on, let it cure, knocked it back with 400, Rolled another coat on, let it cure, knocked it back with 400. Rolled it on, let it cure, knocked it. He did that five times. His end result after polishing looked fabulous, like a mint, like the best paint job I've seen with $50 can of paint ever. I should have been doing that with the, uh, with the spray gun. You know, first coat goes on light, missed it on. Let that cure for about 10, 15 minutes. Get out there, put a medium coat on it. Let that cure for about two, three hours. Knock it back with some sandpaper. Get out there and hit it again. But I should have done it with the two parts paint, one part thinner. It would have been less sanding videos. I probably would have got the job done a little sooner, but that's okay. We got the job done. And to be honest, I think that's about all I can think of for now that I, that I can really say on this. Except for, don't be afraid to fail, and don't let the nerds on the internet discourage you. And by nerds, I don't mean the commenters in the comment section. I mean the trolls, the ones that, oh, you can't build muscle because you're over 40, or or you, sh you should get a professional to do it, or take it to a spray shop. It's only this much money, but they don't realize where you live and that there is no spray shop in town that will do it for that. Like guys, I live in a shit town. Population, 51,300 even though the sign says 54,000. There is no body shop in town where I can do all the prep work, bring the car in, and they'll just take an HVLP and blast it. I've, I called around, I thought about that option. I called everywhere, and they all said the same thing. 
oh no, we do all the prep, we'll do all the body work. Uh, we don't want any amateur jobs coming out of our shop. And I don't blame them because it's their credibility. Because if anybody asks, holy hell, who painted this car? And I come back and say, well, Modern Auto Body. Modern Auto Body just got a bad rap because of my shitty body work, but they laid down good paint. Do they want that? I wouldn't want that as a business person. If I was fixing computers and somebody said, hey, build me a cheap machine and I build them a cheap machine with a shitty motherboard and it's breaking down and then they bring it to another computer shop and the computer shop goes, oh, who built this? And they just say, oh yeah, it was uh, this guy, no, Adam, he put it together for me. But buddy doesn't mention that I asked for a cheap computer, so I cheaped out on the parts. Now I got a bad rap because I sold this guy a potato, but that's all he wanted to pay for. You know what I mean? Like, it's one of those deals. So nobody would just let me do all the, all, all the hard stuff and then them just grab a mask and a gun and just hose her down for me and call it a day. We don't have those in North Bay. You guys might have them in the USA. Maybe they got them in Toronto or Ottawa, like the bigger cities. But in this little shit town, you, you want to get your car resprayed at a body shop? Get ready to pay. Because like I said, the cheapest price I got was about three grand. And that was for a base clear combo, single spray, single stage. And the one shop in town quoted me four grand when they saw pictures of the car and said, we got a lot of work to do on that. And I said, but I don't want to do a lot of work. I can do a lot of the work myself. They said, no, we do all the work. So there you go. That's why I did it myself. Now here's the thing going forward. I don't know what to do now. Like all my projects are done, but I'm not quitting YouTube. I'll think of stuff to film. I'll still think of stuff to put up. Don't worry about that. I'm not, I'm not about to shut her down, boys. Not about to shut her down. I have though come across a lot of big YouTubers who have been shutting down their channels and that's kind of discouraging. And a lot of it is because of the money is drying up, right? Y'all heard about adpocalypse that happened a little while back because of all the swearing on videos and and all that. And you probably noticed I cleaned up my tone a lot. Like I used to drop an F-bomb every third word and it was pretty brutal. And I cleared up my act because let's face it, YouTube wants to be television. And the only way they can be television is if the creators, i.e. me and everybody else who are watching on YouTube, cleans up their act more to televised standard. That's the way it is. And a lot of people are finding it hard to make content with those regulations put into place. So their solution is shut her down. Can't film here anymore, guys. Follow us on Facebook. Their, con their guidelines aren't as brutal. You know, uh, you guys probably heard me in the past talking about McJugger Nuggets. I don't really watch them much anymore. It's pretty funny. Anyway, um, he basically left YouTube to go on his own platform, Storyfire, where there's less regulations. You can swear all you want. You can smash TVs. You can dropkick Xboxes. You can friggin' put a car through a pool and YouTube won't flag it because it's not YouTube. It's his own little platform. But it's also a platform full of elitists. Not anybody can just walk over there and say, hey, I want to put up a series because you got to go through the panel and he's going to look on YouTube. Oh, how many subs do you have? Oh, you only have 13,000. Yeah, you ain't going to make me any money. So we're not interested kind of. But I, I'm not saying I actually applied because I could care less. Like all my watchers or, or viewers or you guys, you're all on YouTube. So why would I jump ship? like I did before when I went to VidMe? No, no. I'm gonna stay here despite the fact that I'm no longer making revenue and I've talked about that in the past. I still enjoy making the content. And I gotta say, doing the vlog a day was brutal. It was getting to the point where I was getting kind of burnt out. I'm gonna be honest, creator burnout, that's a thing, man. You make these videos every day, you're gonna get burnt out. And that's what happens to a lot of YouTubers who do daily vlogs or do daily videos. It comes to the point where it no longer becomes fun. It literally becomes something that you dread. Like you wake up in the morning and you're like, oh man, I gotta pick up that camera and what am I gonna do today? What kind of a video can I make? What's really going on? Why is my cat eating that pink sock? Where'd that pink sock come from? And then you film your cat eating a pink sock. Like, you know, it's, it's one of those, like you, will lose interest. It's it's like if you ran a, a crafting thing where you make funny shirts or you knit toques or whatever. If you do it as a hobby where you just make a toque here and there or you make a funny shirt here and there or you weld a piece of art or whatever as a hobby, you look forward to doing that, to sitting down and doing that or whatever the case may be. You know, where if you make it a chore, the fun level drops hard, 
and it no longer becomes fun. Then you just dread it every time you got to do it. And then you get burnt out because you run out of ideas. It's like writer's block, basically. Since I dropped doing that, I've felt a lot better. Like even this this past week, guys, I've been I've been working out every day. I get up in the morning at 6 a.m., come downstairs, have myself some apple cider vinegar and water, get just right ramped, jump on the exercise bike, do 10 minutes of high intense interval training, jump in the shower, get ready, go to work, get off work at five, slam a pre-workout, jump on the bow flex, and depending on what day it is, if it's chest day, back day, leg day, leg day the bow flex isn't really used because there's not much I could figure out to do with the bow flex for leg day. I don't have the uh, leg press belt, and if I did, I wouldn't bother. I'd rather just grab the preacher curl bar, get it on my shoulders or on my chest, and just squat the living tits out of it. And then after my workout, I have yet another shower, have my dinner. Usually after my workout, my dinner's in the air fryer already. I'll just spin the dial, go jump in the shower, get cleaned up, and then eat my dinner. And then I just sit there and I watch YouTube's chat with a friend on Facebook or friends on Facebook. And then by 9.30, I'm in bed. And that's been my whole week. Didn't have to worry about editing. Didn't have to worry about doing anything. Just enjoy life. <clears throat> then the weekend comes and I decide to pick up the camera and shoot. Sure. Why not? It's a good time. I'm liking this way of doing YouTube a lot better than every freaking day. And I know a lot of people are upset that the daily videos stop, but you got to remember, mental health is an important thing to watch out for. So watch out for your mental health, people. That's all you got to do. That's it. Oh, yeah. And pomp. So anyway, people, thanks for watching this one. Hopefully you enjoyed it. If you did, click that like button. Any questions, comments, concerns, stove them down below. And until next time, people, peace to frig out. Sit, stupid, sit. Good dog.